What's up guys, welcome back to another video. And today, you've clicked on this video for a reason. You wanna know more about carbon rims and if it's even worth it in BMX freestyle and street and park today. But before we get to that, I have a new bike build that I'm working on that's got me kind of thinking about all the different bikes I've built in the past and how far the bikes have come. I mean, absolutely insane. I was thinking back to an old volume destroyer that I built up that had Alex triple walls and at one point in time, had these Sun foreplay rims that I'm about to pull out now. This Sun foreplay rim is a double wall? Double wall. Super, super heavy. 48 hole. Really, really thick. High side walls. And back then we used to run really thick brake pads. I guess people thought the thick brake pads and high side walls meant better stopping. Not too sure. Definitely a different type of a, a material. I don't know what type of aluminum this is. Maybe it even says it on here. This is 6000 series aluminum. It's got like little grooves. You can kind of hear it there on the sidewall rim. Maybe that was to help them to be able to get more braking on it. Not too sure. But these things are super, super heavy. Really good during their time though, that's for sure. I don't even think this one's bent. Maybe we'll have to revisit this for a video and see what it feels like to ride. But that doesn't pass today's standards. Today's standards, I currently run the Alienation Vandal and the Alienation Mischief Rims. I actually have them right here, brand new ones that I was gonna put on my bike and then Alienation said, hey, we got these carbon rims, would you mind doing a video on them and showcasing them to your viewers and letting them know how well they last on, uh, on street, even though they're not made for street, okay guys? They're selling them as a race specific rim but hey, you know what? We gotta put them to the test and see if BMX Freestyle Street Park is even ready for carbon fiber. Or even if your uh, your bank account's ready for carbon fiber, which we'll talk a little bit more about momentarily. This is the Alienation Vandal Rim. This is the current setup I'm running right now on the rear. This is a 36 hole. Uh, it comes in three colors. This is the black with the red text, black on black, so it has black text, and chrome with black text. Uh, this is also tubeless compatible. I've done a video previously where I was doing the tubeless tires that Alienation has on their tubeless rims. The tubeless tires will be coming out pretty soon. Uh, we'll do another video revisiting those in the near future. But uh, I do have one set of tires left over that we're going to be doing a tubeless video on the carbon rims. to where we do a weight comparison versus tubelito tubes and tubeless. I know, pretty crazy what BMX has come to. So. This is a pretty light rim. The weight is on the screen right now. This is a very wide rim for those riders that want that extra durability, that extra width, you know, for those hard landings. If you're landing sideways, you're jumping down sets of stairs, you want a nice wide rim. And uh, this might be the rim for you. I mean, it's a, it's definitely been my go-to rim probably for the past about a year now. The current front rim I'm running right now is this Alienation Mischief. This is also tubeless compatible. It is strictly a front rim only. I have seen people run them on the rear that are brakeless riders that are really smooth and a couple Flatlanders as well. So like I said, tubeless compatible means that the rim is specific to a tubeless tire only. You can't just necessarily put a regular tire on there. Actually you can, it can be done. It just, it leaks sealant all over the place. So. Um, yeah, this is my go-to front rim. The weight is on the screen right now. That way you guys have a nice comparison. This one is so light though. It's unbelievable how far, how far we've come from this, <laughs> this sun rims 48 hole foreplay to this alienation mischief. Absolutely insane. So without further ado, we are going to get into the carbon rims that I'm running and, uh, I'm going to be lacing them up tomorrow and gonna to be doing a bike build video for you guys. I'm gonna be doing several videos on these wheels in different testing scenarios, just so you guys know. So if you guys are new around here and you wanna know more about carbon, consider subscribing right now because I'm gonna be doing a bunch of new videos on these rims in the near future. The goods, I did open them up. You know, I had to make sure they weren't damaged or anything. Again, big shout out to Alienation for contributing to the YouTube channel and uh, basically wanting to get their products showcased out there for you guys and your viewing pleasure. And without further ado, ooh, something fell down in there. The, the brake pads that they recommend and they want us to use on these rims. These brake pads, we'll, we'll talk more about these in a moment. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, my gosh. These things are beautiful. Pull the other one. Wow. 
Wow, these things are ridiculously light. And just so we're clarifying right now, weight only really plays a factor when it comes to rotational weight. So obviously this Sun 48 hole rim, you would think is at its heaviest point at its standstill, but it's not. If you start to propel this thing forward and you get a lot of rotational weight in this wheel, it becomes at its heaviest point. So when you take away grams or ounces, whatever you guys kind of convert to in your country, you actually gain so much more with riding when you get to a lighter rim, but you don't want to necessarily sacrifice strength. That's kind of where carbon fiber comes in. A lot of mountain bikers, road bikers, even downhill mountain bikers have been swearing by carbon for a long time, but it's basically your wallet has got to be what has to answer to it. So for $292, you can get a set of carbon rims for your bike. Now this rim isn't for everyone. Like I said earlier, this is supposed to be a race specific rim, but uh, I've talked to LA Nation a little bit. I've kind of convinced them, letting them know that mountain bikers have been using carbon for so long. And I feel like it's time for freestyle BMX to kind of advance to that portion. Now this isn't gonna be for everyone. Your first day riding, you're not gonna be riding carbon rims. And if you are, you're likely to probably mess them up. You're likely to mess up your entire bike because you're so new to riding and you don't know how to absorb casing or properly eject from your bike and not hurt yourself. So this may not be the rim for you in that case, but if you're an advanced rider and you basically want to advance your riding in general and lighten up your bike and go that extra step, the $292 might not be a far cry um, for your bike to be able to kind of get to that point. I mean, I'm just falling in love with how they look. I know it's not all about looks. It is about how they ride, which we will get to that in the next coming videos and how they ride, how they feel, tubeless versus tubes, and uh, how stiff they feel. That's one thing that I always try to tell people. I run titanium spokes, not for the weight necessarily, but because I love the way they feel when you're riding versus chromoly. Maybe we'll revisit that in a near future video. Now that I'm thinking about it, I just think it's just a cool concept to kind of explain to you guys. But this just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight on the carbon rims I'm gonna be running on my bike, doing a bunch of different test videos. These things look absolutely insane. I mean, the grooves on the sidewall, the rim, and as you can see, the grooves look like they're directional. The directional is probably good for these brake pads we're gonna go over in a moment. But if you check out the center part of the rim and how deep the canal is, that's actually specific for the tubeless compatible tires so that there's like a little hook on the inside of the rim for the tire to latch onto. We'll go over that in a future video because I have to know what it feels like going from tubolito tubes to tubeless compatible, especially with this light of a rim. So speaking of braking, so I told you about the, uh, the grooves that are on the side of the rim. That's where the brake pads come in. So your traditional brake pads come in all different kinds, right? You can got, you got half the size of this. You have cool stops that are kind of gummy. You have clear pads. These ones look like they're specifically for this rim in general because they have these little grooves on them. And I'm sure they probably do work really well. I just have a feeling that I'm gonna end up using my clear brake pads on these, which is fine because there's nothing to, to rub off because there's no color to it because it's just, it's carbon. So like I said earlier, I have to reiterate myself, these are race specific rims, but if you're willing to go the extra mile and you wanna take your bike to the next step and you're riding to that next level, these might be the rims for you for $292 a piece, all right? $292, and you guys are probably wondering, is $292 for a rim worth it when you can get this one for $64.99? Or this Vandal for $69.99? That's the question that needs to be answered. And that's what I'm gonna answer here in the coming videos and let you guys know, are these rims worth it? I'm assuming they're worth it. They look like they're worth it. They feel like they're gonna be solid and no better thing to do than to just test them out on my new current setup I'm gonna be building up. The next coming videos are gonna be a bike build with these rims on them and uh, get my initial thoughts on them before I end up doing a tubeless versus tubolito set up on these bad boys. So if you guys are new around here, consider subscribing. I do videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sometimes Thursday. So with that being said, put those post notifications on so you don't miss a video, especially on some on some carbon rims. If you guys have any other suggestions for future videos, riding videos, you know what to do. Put them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, drop a like. If you love it, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one.